Hi, everyone. Uh, so it's the towards the end of a, a really long day for me and for millions of others in the USA. Um, today was Biden's inauguration day, January 20th. Um, and activities for the inauguration started very early this morning. I was up actually sort of 4.30, 5 o'clock this morning, um, watching as much of the action as I could. Um, although today was a working day, so I had to do some work too. Um, but uh, it was an amazing day. Um, very, very happy to see it. I was happy to, um, to not hear about any more Trump uh, nonsense. Um, you know, with his supporters, Trump has gone. Um, I actually loved seeing uh, the back of Trump. Um, he snuck away like a, like a, uh, you know, a small animal with his tail between his legs um, before the inauguration actually started. So he didn't, it's very normal in this country for the the transition of power to be passed from one president to the next there's all sorts of nice formalities um where uh, the outgoing president will will show the incoming president around the white house and um and wish them well and 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 help in all sorts of ways with the transition of power there have been a few um uh, you know, difficult transitions, transition, transitions that were a bit more competitive, a bit more, um, you know, well thought. Um, but in all cases that, uh, you know, certainly within living memory, um, the presidents have added as, you know, has acted as decent human beings. Um, and, um, and Trump isn't that. Right. So um, so he either decided himself or I suspect he was asked uh, to not attend the inauguration. Um, he's created so much division, hatred, unhappiness, chaos, um, you know, in this country. Uh, he wasn't welcome today. And the event was was far better without him. Frankly, it would have been inappropriate for him to be um, to be involved in any way. There were uh three previous presidents there uh clinton bush and, and barack obama and at some point they were being interviewed and they were talking and I, it just struck me um the way they were talking with wise words and friendly words and encouraging words for the country trump couldn't do that he couldn't have been with those three men and said anything decent or nice um after having spent the last two months, you know, denying that, um, you know, that he lost the election, uh, after spending the last year denying that COVID was a thing and letting 400,000 people die, after lying constantly for the last four years, you know, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't have stepped up to the occasion, clearly. Um, so, um, so Trump is gone. And, uh, you know, good riddance to him. That's what I think of that. Um, so, um, so then Biden was inaugurated around about noon, uh, midday on the East coast, right? So, um, he, the inauguration ceremonies, um, take place. There's a lot to do on that day. Uh, you have to remember Biden is the president of the USA. He's also, um, the head of the armed forces, the chief of the armed forces. Um, he has to get his administration in place. Literally, uh, the, quite literally, they had to hire and swear in um, over a thousand people today um, who are people appointed by Biden to do certain roles within the government. Um, and, um, and a lot of this preparation normally happens before the inauguration day, but of course with um, with Trump being such a, an idiot, um, a lot of these things were delayed. Um, and so Biden has to hit the ground running with staff that he puts together, et cetera, but he's been hampered and delayed by Trump's childish behavior. So um, so there were a lot of things that, that uh, Biden had to do, a lot of formalities, a lot of nice traditions that were um, played out. Um, so, people from both political parties uh, wishing him well, coming together, you know, unifying uh, behind the new leader of the USA. Very important that that happened. 
Um, of course, tomorrow, you know, they'll be arguing again. Um, you know, they'll be back to normal politically. Um, but I think Biden has a good chance of uniting uh, the country um, uh, and uniting politicians um, for the good of the country. It's very important that he does that. And he's the right guy for that. He's very good at wor working with people across the aisle. Um, so the rhetoric in the USA has got to be dialed back a bit. Uh, we've got to try and be nice to each other a little bit more because there's been lots of division. Um, and, um, you know, we've got to try and forgive and forget. I mean, it's difficult to forget people who've done such awful things and supported a man who did such awful things. But nevertheless, you know, people have got to get along. I mean, I, I, I don't care about Trump, but, but I do want to get along with other people and I want, other, I want our politicians to get along with, with each other uh, for the good of the country. So we'll see how they can work with that. Um, at about five o'clock in the afternoon, Trump, um, sorry, Trump, huh, um, Trump, uh, Trump's gone. Um, about five o'clock in the afternoon, Biden was, um, was able to sign in some executive orders. And um, he, uh, he did, he, he had kept, he had made certain promises about what he was going to do on, on day one, right? So a big thing that he did was he sent in a new immigration bill uh, to Congress. Um, this is a very ambitious bill, I have to say. Um, and ambitious isn't always good. Um, uh, you have to understand that Biden has, um, he's got some political capital. He's got a lot of people behind him, but he's got the most narrow nar margins possible in, in the House uh, and the Senate. Um, so, it's going to be difficult for him to push through unpopular laws, right? So the way that it works is a law is suggested, a bill is suggested. In this case, uh, the, the Biden administration are suggesting a bill. Um, it will have support already um, from, the, from the Senate and from, um, from uh, House representatives. It'll have support already. Um, but he's suggesting a bill. It doesn't mean that he can pass laws. That's the thing that people don't really understand. American presidents are not able to just make laws, um, you know, by themselves. There's a whole process um, of Congress voting on that law, etc. And uh, once they've both houses have agreed that, it will go to the president for signature. Um, so Biden is entitled to raise that. Um, for vote, for discussion, for, uh, you know, for consideration by Congress. Um, but he can't just make it happen. So he suggested a number of things. There's protection for DACA, um, a pathway to citizenship for undocumented immigrants in the USA that have been here several years, um, sort of like an eight-year path, uh, like an amnesty in a way, um, but not an automatic amnesty. Um, so some, some good things there. Um, some good things in reining in some of the negative things that Trump has done um, over a period of years, some of the longer term things that he's done. Um, and <clears throat> interestingly, um, a measure that would increase DV lottery uh, uh, quotas from the 55,000 to 80,000. Now, don't get too excited. Firstly, this won't affect DV 2021 or DV 2022. Um, it's too late for that. And of course, the law has to be uh, you know, discussed and voted on, and there's a whole process. So it couldn't possibly affect DV 2021 or DV 2022. It's not possible to affect those, those two years. It might be in place in time for DV 2023, um, but that's a maybe. Um, and it may not be agreed, right? Because there are many politicians that don't um, agree with DV lottery. They would rather see uh, immigration um, handled in a different way for the additional visas, right? So there was some help, up, by the way, for family-based and work-based um, visas, some good measures there. But DV lottery is a small part of the overall immigration bucket. Uh, it's less than 5% of, of yearly immigration normally. Um, so um, 
it's good that he's got the right focus on DV Lottery. He obviously supports DV Lottery and wants to uh, see it grow, not kill it, which is great news. Um, but it's not a certainty that we'll get this bill through. Okay, so just hold your excitement about that. And in any case, it's going to be affecting people that are not even selectees yet. Okay. Um, uh, what else did he do? Um, okay, and there was also uh, there's um, there's adoption of the No Ban Act into this larger immigration um, law. Now that means that any future president, including Biden if this law is adopted, would not be able to implement the sort of um, sweeping uh, blockages and bans that Trump was able to do. Um, so it's clarification about that situation that's, uh, uh, you know, that, that would be very welcome. So that if, God forbid, if we ever got another, uh, another Trump in the future, um, they wouldn't be able to do the same sort of thing. So I very much hope that that measure goes through um, uh, as is. That would be a good thing. So uh, thanks to the lawyers that actually have helped craft that no ban act. Um, okay, so that's about the immigration bill. Um, he also revoked the Muslim ban. Now the Muslim ban is not the general immigration ban. We're not talking about PP 10014. Uh, we're talking on the bans, um, uh, the bans that affected certain countries. These countries I'm showing on screen now. So people from these countries were previously um, uh, banned. Some of these some of these bans were put in place three and a half years ago. Um, actually, Trump, as soon as he came into office, was trying to block Muslims, and it took them three attempts to to sort of get it right. I mean, if you can call it right, but at least to get it to the point where it wasn't being blocked by the law law courts. Um, and so in the end, there's been a couple of extensions to the ban. In the end, it's these, this list of countries here of people that are banned. Some of those countries, most of those countries, are DV lottery countries. Um, and so there is going to be an impact of the removal of this, this ban on DV lottery in uh, 2021 and, and possibly even 2020, DV 2020, and DV 2022, of course. Um, and the impact I've discussed before, but um, uh, you know the, the impact, particularly in the Asia region, is going to be quite significant. So, for example, Iran and Yemen, between them, have um, a lot of selectees um, in uh, in DV 2021. So, and and Iran in particular has all of its case numbers concentrated under 20,000, roughly under case number 20,000. In other words, all of its 6,000 selectees, I think it is, are um, concentrated in that first 20,000 numbers. Well, that means then that high case numbers just got a little bit higher, if you see what I mean, because um, seven or 8,000, I think it's about 7,500 people that were previously banned by the Muslim ban in Asia are now not banned. And most of them have low-ish, you know, low case numbers. Um, so uh, you see, you can see the impact of that for high case numbers is is going to be a blow to high case numbers. But frankly, it's a fair thing. You can also see that there are some African countries, and again, the same sort of comment, although not in quite the same sort of scale, um, will apply in Africa. The higher case numbers um, will be impacted because uh, because these countries are now no longer banned. Right. So overall, there's about 15,000 people out of the 130,000 uh, selectees that just got unbanned. Right. And so that's a pretty big, significant impact when we're talking about, you know, 55,000 visas being available. Um, 15,000 people just suddenly got released and able to, to process. So um, so there is. You know, there's a good side to it and there's a bad side. And if you're not from one of these banned countries and if you have a high case number, then for you, I'm afraid it's probably bad news. Um, and, you know, so, but that's that's the way it is. And I hope you will agree with me and see that that's the fair thing, um, whether, you, whether it's the right thing from your particular perspective or not, it's the fair thing. So, um, so the ban is, uh, the Muslim ban is revoked. Now, 
people from those countries aren't immediately able to process those cases because, of course, people from those countries, like all other people, uh, immigrants, are affected by presidential proclamation um, uh, PP10014, right? And that has not been revoked today, okay? Um, so basically, the plan to revoke the Muslim ban has been made for some time. That was already in place, um, probably before the end of the year. And at the time they planned that, I'm sure PP10014 was, you know, was, um, was not even extended at that time. Um, now, I've, I've had some discussions with people today. Um, you know, some guy said it would take him five seconds, to, you know, five minutes to, to have revoked that, you know, that, that uh, policy as well. Um, well, that's not really true. It wouldn't have taken five minutes. Um, you know, it would have taken longer because when they're writing laws, they have to do them right, correctly. Um, it's not laws, but even presidential actions have to be written correctly. Um, and, you know, we don't want another idiot uh, president running around doing things in a rash, unorganized, you know, disorganized, you know, knee-jerk reaction way. We don't want that, right? So, uh, so we all have to be patient while Biden gets his ducks in a row and decides within his staff and his team that yes, it makes sense to remove PP10014. I certainly hope he does. I can't guarantee he will. I think he will. Um, but we're going to have to be patient. Now, when is he going to, when is he likely to do that? Well, he's set out a series of themes, if you, if you like, a series of days when he's going to be working on different aspects of what his administration need to do. And he's already said, he's announced that he's going to be working on additional executive actions like presidential proclamations or revoking them or whatever on uh, January 29th. So we have to wait and be patient until then. And we have to hope that uh, he sees his way to remove presidential proclamation 10014. Um, at the same time, he may also at that time remove the, uh, the regional bans such as the Schengen ban, um, he may do, he may not. Um, he has to he has to do things in a measured, sensible way, where if he's going to remove bans, that he has some sort of other measure to make sure that we're all not going to be impacted. Now, the underlying um, excuse for PP10014 was to protect jobs in the USA. That was bullshit. Let's be honest, that was bullshit. Um, uh, and arguably, Trump didn't have the authority to, to do that, and that's what the lawyers are arguing at the moment. Um, so it should be fairly easy to remove that ban, but um, Biden has to be very sensitive and careful to not suddenly pull down all sorts of restrictions and have people complain that he's being too fair to immigrants and not fair enough to people in the country. So he has to come up with sensible ways to do things. Really, the focus should be on safety, not work nonsense, not job competition. It should be on safety, though. So there is far more justification, in my mind, of the Schengen bans and Brazil and all those sort of bans if, uh, if the COVID crisis is bad in those countries. There's far more justification for those bans than PP10014, which is um, ostensibly about, uh, about work. Uh, and protecting American jobs. Um, but in either case, um, Biden has to come up with measures to make sure that things are done um, in a safe way. So that probably means implementing additional restrictions. I expect us to have additional restrictions on travel, but I don't expect them to be blanket restrictions saying no immigrants can come in or nobody can come in or whatever. I don't expect that. I expect them to actually implement uh, rules such as saying, you need a test, or maybe you need the vaccination, or maybe <coughs> you have to agree to have at least the first jab of the va vaccination before you come in or immediately after you come in, I, you know, something like that. They'll, they'll come up with some sort of um, idea of how they're going to make us, um, you know, ma make us in America safe from people from abroad. And that's that's valid. That's perfectly fine. We already, as you already know, 
we go through medicals when we're going through the DV lottery process and we have to have certain injections and vaccinations. If you don't do them, you don't get your visa. So it's not at all um, uh, unexpected that they say, okay, we want you to have a vaccination for COVID. Um, it would be entirely reasonable, but it's going to take time for them to write those um, those rules and make sure that they're acceptable and adopted uh, by the CDC and others um, to make sure that that can go ahead. And so we in the DV lottery community have to remain patient while all of that happens. So whilst there are going to be some executive actions planned for January 29th, I am not 100% certain what's going to happen on that day. And um, and I, I want to just caution you that it may not be entirely everything we want, right? Um, hopefully we'll get some of what we want, and most of what we want, particularly PP10014. The Schengen bands and other bands, you can work around them, okay? So it's, a, it's an inconvenience, it's an annoyance, um, you know, but you can work around them. So, um, you know, those, if those remained, it wouldn't be too bad. So we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. But I did just want to sort of uh, let people know, you know, what was going on from today. Um, please be patient, okay? I've already had people today, you know, talking about Biden as if, and, and over the last couple of days, actually, talking about Biden as if he's the same somehow as Trump. That's just an idiotic um, perspective, frankly. If you think that, you really are not paying attention. Um, and, and frankly, if you think that, I'm probably going to lose my temper with you, so you probably best not say that to me, right? Um, so, uh, you know, don't even go there. That's just stupid. We've had four years of an idiot. Don't tell me that, that Biden is, is the same as that guy. Uh, you're just not paying attention. And, you, and if you are saying that because he's not done what you wanted for your scenario, then you're frankly being childish, selfish, and pathetic. Okay, so please don't do that, right? I hope I've made myself clear. Um, understand that Biden has got many responsibilities that he's just taken on. Uh, he's doing, trying to do the best he can for everybody, but he first and foremost needs to take care of stopping the coronavirus in this country because it's killing people. It's killing 4,000 people a day. He has to roll out a vaccination program that has been totally screwed up by, uh, by Trump. Uh, you know, Trump's really made a mess of it. He hasn't requ required anyone to do anything. Um, uh, and, and we're way behind in vaccinations um, from where we should be. Other countries are shooting ahead of us. Um, Biden has to encourage people to wear masks and diffuse the political situation that, is, um, that has got some people deliberately not wearing masks or, or determinedly, you know, not social distancing, when actually that is what's keeping us all um, you know, in this prolonged state of closure. So, you know, they're anti-lockdown. These people are sometimes anti-lockdown. They don't want the lockdowns. And so they, you know, they go out and they, they party, you know, with all of their friends. They don't wear their masks. They get sick. Rates of sickness continue. Our healthcare system is, is under stress. And it's because of these idiots that don't take their health seriously and don't take our health seriously. They don't protect me by wearing their masks, for example, when they're out in the street and, you know, they don't care about anyone else. So, um, so the whole COVID crisis needs to be dealt with in several different ways. Um, and, you know, it's important that Biden focuses on that. Um, Biden will have to focus on jobs as well because the economy is, is smashed because of Trump's actions. Um, and, you know, Biden's got to get people back to work. But that really is the first and foremost. You've got to make people safe, which means getting people vaccinated so that they can return to work. Um, and uh, so that's going to be hugely important as well. Biden's got to start talking to all sorts of other world leaders so that we can regain our place in the world. We've done a horrible job of, um, of being a world leader in this last four years. So he's rejoined the Paris Accord today. He's rejoining or stopping the efforts to take us out of uh, the World Health Organization. These are other things that he's done today. Um, and you know th these are the right things. So Biden has a whole list of high, high, very important priorities. Immigration is an important issue to him. Um, he's pro-immigration. He believes in immigration, but just 
give him a few days, uh, you know, give him some time to, to work on that, all right? And as I've said before, and I hope I've made this clear, I don't believe I'm gonna believe, I'm gonna be agreeing with everything Biden does. I'm sure I won't be. Um, he, it's not like the sun shines out of his butt or anything. He's just a very decent man compared to Trump, right? Um, but he may not do the things that we want him to do, and we may therefore still need to have the lawyers sue the Biden administration to get what we need and what we want and what's right. Okay. So, um, you know, so the lawyers are standing by, they're not dropping their cases. They will continue fighting the government, even though the head of the government is now Biden and hopefully perspectives in the government will change. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we'll continue fighting for DV lottery winners. And I don't need to be told 78 times an hour, uh, you know, to not forget DV 2020 and DV 2021, and none of the lawyers need to be told that either. We know, right? We're working on that. We don't need to be told every five minutes. Um, you know, that's what that's what we're working on. So, um, so there you go. That's uh, that's a sort of a, a rundown of what happened today, the inauguration day, and um, so happy to be at this point. Um, a lot of good stuff is happening. Um, just feels so much different than it felt 24 hours ago. Um, you know, just relaxed and, you know, like I'm having a little celebration beer here uh, to, um, you know, to enjoy the day. So I'm going to finish that <laughs> and, um, uh, and enjoy that. And then I'm going to rest tonight and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow. Um, and hopefully this video will clarify some of some of the things that have gone on today. And I've also created um, a blog post entry for because this is an important subject. So I've written down pretty much what I've just said here. I've written it down um, so that even if you can't understand my um, you know my my talking, you'll be able to go uh, and read that on my blog. So I'll make sure that's posted in the video description. And the video will also be on the blog, right? So you'll be able to get that both ways, okay? Hope that's helpful to, for you. Um, fingers crossed, everyone. Be patient. Be patient, right? Big, whoops, that way, right? There you go. Be patient. Uh, please, just be patient. Be respectful. Uh, be hopeful. Uh, but be patient. And, you know, we'll do the best we can to get as many of you through as possible. All right? Okay, everyone. Good night then. Bye-bye.